chance in over the years, 42 years of covering sports and also high school football, college football, and you get to know some of the young men earlier tonight or earlier t- this afternoon. We had Quentin Johnston from TCU and Temple High School now with the Chargers who joined us on the great weekend that he had. And you get to know young men and you watch them grow into more than just sports or athletes or whatever. And, man, this might be numero uno. Calvin Beecham joins us. Arizona Cardinals offensive lineman, Mejia High School and SMU graduate on 365 Sports who has an incredible exhibition going on at Baylor this weekend. Kelvin, in fact, joins us by video. And, Kelvin, it's great to have you. You have become more than a football player. When did that kind of become part of your life or what you wanted to become part of your life? Man, down in my head, Texas, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I was playing football, but at the end of the day, my grandpa expected me on the drum Sunday morning and Thursday night for church. Uh, my daddy expected me in the shop when I wasn't in school. Uh, so, man, this was this was born and bred into me in the fabric of who I am early on in my childhood. So uh, I've been blessed to to have to wear a number of hats prior to, to being an uh, athlete there at my high school and, and being a student athlete uh, there at SMU. Kelvin, uh, where did uh, this, I mean, I know your wife uh, is certainly a part of that, but this uh, love of art uh, come that you're, you're starting out here? Man, it, it happened actually when we first got married. Uh, our first uh, honeymoon was on a, a Royal Caribbean cruise to the Caribbean. And, you know, being a young couple, we wanted to, to, to do something that kind of commemorated it. So, you know, ran up on a, uh, or stumbled upon a piece of art on that cruise ship. And that was the... The, the piece that started this journey. And then I would say as we've traveled and as we've went to different locations and played for different teams, uh, we've been able to, to, to spend time in different markets and just be exposed to different histories and histories that we didn't know about through uh, being able to go and explore art. Um, it's, a, it's another way to, to be exposed to culture. Um, and it's been something that we found fascinating and excited to be able to share it with those there in Waco and abroad. Jessica is your wife, graduated from Baylor back in 2011. Of course, you're from SMU. That's where you graduated and and now a part of the NFL. So what's happening? It's this this Saturday. Um, We'll see. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Private reception May the 5th is going to be on display May 6th at the Martin Museum of Art at Baylor. Where have you been storing some of this artwork? (laughs) Well, what was not able to stay in the house, we put it in the museum. Uh, so it's, it's a large work that's on canvas there at the Mart Museum uh, by this artist Von Spahn, uh, Von Spahn, I mean, um, that it, it just can't live in our house. It's, just, it's, it's literally too big. And it's been at the, um, the Phoenix Art Museum for the last couple of years. And this is the first time that it's traveled uh, since we've acquired it. And it's actually going to be there on view uh, for the next couple of months there at, um, uh, there at the Mart Museum there in Waco. Um, so when it's not able to be in our house, we try to put it in the museum. We try to loan the work to other institutions because it's about the artist. You know, as an athlete, so many people and, you know, hear about, you know, how popular we are and role models we are. But it's something about being able to, to, to shine a light on somebody else and shine a light on artists that are critical and, 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 and intellectual and, you know, are able to investigate things that we may not think about in our everyday life. And I think that's what's most fascinating about this work and about this exhibition is this exploration into somebody else's mind that we get to go on as we embark on on seeing their work and seeing the impact of their work, uh, not only in society, but in kind of our everyday lives. Kelvin, uh, also uh, back home in Mejia, uh, another food drive uh, out there. How can people get involved in that? You know, if you got time, come on down to Mejia, Texas. (laughs) We're giving away food. (laughs) Uh, We're giving away food, man. Please register. Uh, we're serving about 500 families, uh, but we want to make sure those who are registered are able to get uh, access to that food first. But y'all know for many years, you know, Smoke, we've been doing this for a long time, man. Uh-huh. Uh, this has always been been my heart, has been able to serve people and been able to feed people. I'm an office mom, and at the end of the day, I love to eat. I want to make sure folks have the same opportunity to do so. So, you know, partnering with uh, Central Texas Food Bank uh, in collaboration with HEB, uh, down there in, in Mahia and excited to feed those who are interested in stopping by. That's going to be happening Friday morning. Um, so we're, I'm at, me and my son are actually at the barbershop getting our haircut right now, and we're going to be heading to, uh, to, to, to Texas in a little bit and excited to spend time with uh, 
those there in, in Mahia and those there uh, in Waco. By the way, Andrea C uh, Cameron, uh, Josh plays at Baylor, sent me this note when we mentioned that you were going to be on the show that your grandfather was close friends with, uh, I believe, Josh's grandfather, who plays at Baylor um, and in the ministry, uh, Reverend oh, yeah. Cleophus yeah, yeah. Cameron. Is that right? Well, that, that was so Elder Cameron was my um, uh, my grandfather was one of his best friends. Um, and my grandfather is I mean, he's creeping up to 90, 94 and beyond. So, you know, you, when you get to that age, people forget how, how really how old you really are. But I used to go to Elder Cameron's church all the time there in Waco uh, for church and for services. Uh, grandfather used to have revivals all the time. But we have a lot of connections. Uh, religiously, there in the area. Pastor Gillum uh, was where my wife went to church there in Waco. Uh, Elder Dixon, Ahmad Dixon, who was a Baylor grad. Yep. yep. Um, Elder, Elder Dixon was, he used to run revivals at my grandfather's church in Mahia. Uh, so there's a number of religious ties um, there in Waco, which, you know, this, this feels like coming home. Um, even though Baylor didn't recruit me, I'm not going to hold it against them. Uh, but it, <laughs> it feels like coming home. <laughs> Yeah, they probably they they, they know they made a mistake. They're, I don't care who they had. They they made a mistake. You're involved in so much. I remember when we were in what San Francisco covering the Super Bowl. You were there to learn about yeah. technology and obviously what was going on in, in in that area. Calvin, you know, it's like you just keep soaking new things into your system or into your life. How much like how busy are you? I'm as busy as I need to be, man. You know, the thing is, is I had a coach, Frank Gans, uh, who coached for the the the, uh, the Rams when they won the Super Bowl in, in, in 99, and he was the coach at SMU uh, until he passed away. And he had this quote, ongoing skill and technique development. As, a, as an offensive lineman, my skill and my technique has to be ongoing. I have to continue to get better. I see those same type of principles and concepts reign through in my life. Um, it's to be able to have this ongoing skill and technique development. It's learning new skills. It's developing those skills in a different way. I want to be a role model for my children. I want my children to realize that it's not just enough to, to, to live off the, off my loins. Uh, you shouldn't be playing football when you, when, you know, after you've graduated, you should have a much better education. So understanding that I'm setting a stage and setting a foundation for what I want what my kids to have long-term and my generations to have, you know, uh, once I'm done, you know, my grandfather used to say this to my father, I want you to go, you know, farther, farther than I did. And my dad would say to me all the time, I want you to go, farther than I did. I'm making it really hard on my children because they got to go farther than I did. Mm -hmm. And I want the next generation to be able to do so as well. Kelvin, the uh, draft just happened. You've got a new young uh, pup coming in there, Paris Johnson, uh, on the offensive line. I know that uh, you get excited about having new teammates, especially ones that you get to mentor directly uh, You know, at that position. What do you think the future is? New coach, everything that's going on there in, in Arizona for you guys. Man, it's new culture. You know, it's, it's, it's a revamp of, of the process and being able to revamp that process to put the organization, um, you know, in the, the, the right frame of mind to be able to win football games. You know, at the end of the day, this is a high-performance business. The only thing that matters is winning football games. If you're not winning football games, you don't get to, to be in the league. I mean, you saw that with the, with the head coach of the Bucks that just got fired, you know, a couple moments ago. You don't win games, even though they, you know, was the regular season champs and, and, and you know, had the number one seed. It's about winning championships. And if you're not winning championships, you don't have a job. Uh, and the same range true in the National Football League. Um, so it's being able to, to retool, reorganize, you know, build the process to be a little better uh, and then kind of roll from there. Calvin and Jessica uh, Beecham again will open the exhibition at Baylor University May the 5th for a couple of months. Uh, it's on the campus, Martin Museum of Art. Museum of Art. So how much have you learned, not just what art is, there's a lot, art can tell stories. You learn yes. and meet other artists, like you meet other teammates in football. How much yeah. of that have, it was like something you never thought you would get into and now you can't get enough of it? Man, I'm addicted to art, to be honest with you, man. I've been buying art and don't even tell my wife now. Uh, don't tell her that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating because you get to see and get to peer into to histories you didn't know about, like, you know, Brown versus Board, you know, that, that, that momentous, momentous uh, court hearing. I didn't realize it was multiple Brown versus Board um, hearings and Brown versus Board cases. And I learned that through Tamashi Jackson. She was gonna, she's going to be one of the, the artists that's in the collection. You know, uh, Mario Moore goes into kind of personal histories and bringing those histories into the forefront. Um, it's this conversation around, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not into to magic, but this conversation of, 
of being able to have this conscious being that may be, you know, around you or, or in your presence. That may be something that you've had carrying, burden that you've been carrying with you or this or this joy that you always have. You know, and that's been depicted by um, uh, by Dominique Chambers. Uh, so it's all these different stories and histories that I find fascinating. And what I love the most is it's learning that I get to have and learning that my family gets to have from spending time with these artists. Um, and it's been cool to go up to New Haven and spend time with Mario, uh, with uh, Dominique Chambers. It's been time to, it's been cool to spend time with Mario, uh, uh, Mario Moore. It's been cool to spend time with Tomashi Jackson. Um, Raleigh Vasquez, which is not in this particular exhibition, but he's a, a artist that we have in the collection. So it's this ongoing learning that we get to take part in. Um, I talked about ongoing skill and technique development. It's a, it's a lifelong learner. I look at my grandfather. My grandfather's still learning new tricks, how to, how to fish and how to take a catfish out of, out of the pond. You know, it's, it's, it's these new things that we get to continue to learn that art is giving me in that particular regard. Calvin Beecham is a renaissance man. No, yeah. Right? Is, that, mean, is that what you would describe yourself as? Uh, not at all, man. I'm just a country boy from a hair attack. <laughs> <laughs> the hair. I love the way you say that because that's the way you have to say it. Calvin, you had made some comments about Kyler Murray after the season. We know he went through the injury. We know that maybe at times he was not quite maybe all entrenched or whatever. And that'd be, that's maybe not fair to say that. How did he take your comments when you were trying to give some constructive criticism with him? I don't know. I ain't been in the building to, to really find out. You know, I've been, I've been raising a family and enjoying the offseason. Benny Camp will be here in June. You know, we had a good relationship. We worked together. Uh, you got to find a way to, to put all that type of stuff aside and, and, and find a way to make each other better. Uh, I expect that he's going to hold me accountable if, if, if I happen to let a guy slide off and hit him. <laughs> and I would imagine that I can hold him accountable if the ball ain't coming out fast enough. Uh, so it's, it's that level of accountability and that, and that level of, of transparency that I'm excited to have with him. And I think that's the relationship that we've had for a number of years and the years that I've been here. And know that that's just the nature of, of, of the beast and the nature of relationships. You know, you say things in media, and sometimes things can be misconstrued, especially when you only take just bits and pieces of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I respect him. He respects me. Uh, we'll have more time to sit together and spend time with each other over the next couple months prior to the season. So know that that relationship is strong and know it's just fine. What did being nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award mean to you? Man, it means that I still got a long ways to go. You know, I shouldn't be getting nominated for awards. I should be still doing the work. But, uh, you know, spending time with the Peyton family, which we've had a chance to do over the, over the last couple of years, it's, it just realized it shows us uh, just how much uh, Walter Payton meant to the National Football League and what Walter Payton meant to the community. Uh, and you realize just being in the community and being able to serve people is, is special because you're able to put a smile on folks' faces. Um, when, you know, there may not be, a, you know, a, a lot of hope. And in my profession, I get to be a hope dealer, not only on the football field, but off the field. What What is more important to you, protecting a quarterback or protecting a piece of art? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, the thing is, it's probably, for, for probably protecting the quarterback right now. You know, I got to get insurance to protect this heart. So, you know, that, it's, it's, it's a little bit more uh, a little bit more convoluted. I can control a lot of the things that, that happens on the football field. You can't control kind of natural disasters and things that happen within shipping, you know. So right. probably protecting, protecting the quarterback because it's, it's a lot more – nuances that go with protecting art. But that's a great question. I've never been asked that. Hey, look, you are the insurance. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's right. Your, <laughs> that's your job. Your insurance. That's what you are. That, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Have you ever dropped a piece of art and were afraid to look whether or not it was damaged? No. We don't, we, you know, we don't do that. The, the kind of very delicate type of art. We love paintings. Okay. Um, so most of the works are paintings. The only thing we, we, we have, we have a couple sculptures, but for the most part, it's all paintings. Our kids know how to interact with the works in the house. Uh, they know not to touch the work uh, unless it's, you know, it's allowed, you know, because, you know, some artists allow you to touch the work. But for the most part, a lot of the work is, is, is paintings. It's paintings in each of the kids' rooms, and they know how to act with the work. So it's, it's, an, it's a learning process and some learning mechanisms that, that are being taught as well with being able to live with the work in the house. If you don't mind, one more question. Uh, when you entered the NFL, did you ever dream you would be there as long as you are? I had no idea. I, I had no idea, man. When I, when, I, when I went off to college, man, my, my only goal was to make enough money when my parents didn't have to work anymore. Uh, my mom is now retired. My dad works because he wants to. Um, 
but it's a, it's a gratifying feeling to be able to go out and accomplish a goal, um, which, you know, like, again, it was just to work hard enough where my parents didn't have to work. So at any point in time, if they said, hey, I don't want to work anymore, it's, there's, there's been enough made uh, and there's been enough created and enough resources where they can literally sit at the house for, you know, the rest of their lives. Now, neither one of them built like that. They got, you know, they got cattle down there, so they always have something to do. But we are, I'm in a position to, 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 to do that at any point in time, and that was really what I set out to do when I left Mayhill High School in 2007. Jessica and Calvin Beecham, the open exhibition at Baylor University's Martin Museum of Art starts on May the 5th. The food bank going on Friday in Meher, and uh, he is, uh, he's the everyman. He really is. He's, it's been great to know him from the beginning. Calvin, thank you so much for your time. Good luck with all of what's going on with the exhibition and also, of course, with the food bank as well. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marcus. Good to see you. Good to hear you. You too, buddy. Calvin Beecham right. with us. Uh,